Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. We've learned a lot about sublimating on fabrics together, but there is so much more that you can decorate. Some of the materials might actually surprise you, like acrylic. I've done a lot of testing to make sublimation and acrylic work well together, and now have three fun ways to show you how you can use your favorite photos or images for fantastic, professional-looking results. So come with me to the craft table and we will make these together. Just look at these fun projects that we're gonna to make today with my free designs. I am so happy with how they turned out. Now these sublimation on acrylic projects all use similar techniques, but have some very important key differences. Let me tell you, I learned a lot about acrylic while testing everything out. I also got some great tips from my friend Angie Holden at the Country Chic Cottage, and we'll link to her video in the description. Thanks, Angie. First, these acrylic keychains are super fast to make and a perfect way to keep your favorite photos with you all the time. I'll show you how to sublimate images and some tips for interactive gifts that you can make. Then another fun option, night lights. One of my favorite parts about sublimation is that the design doesn't have to fit the blank perfectly. These different night light blanks are a great example and I'll show you how to get a perfect transfer even when your item and the design shapes don't match. And my all-time favorite, the photo panels. These are just such a beautiful way to display your favorite illustrations and images. I tried a few different brands and will share my recommendations. These panels are not all the same, believe me. And I'm gonna show you a hack to curve the flat panels so they'll stand up all on their own like mine are here. It's a super helpful tip that I picked up from Becky over at Design Bundles channel, and I just had to try it for myself. Thank you for sharing, Becky. To make these, you'll also need some pretty standard sublimation tools and supplies for these projects. I have all the details in the tutorial over at jennifermaker.com 490. There are a few special items that you'll need for this, um, such as a large heat safe canister, like this one, a pair of needle nose pliers, some heavy books, I've got cookbook and my tiny house book here, some heat resistant gloves, a tray of water and a sponge. Can you guess which project goes with which ones? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out. Now let's sublimate some acrylic together. First, you'll wanna get a sublimation design. You can use any print sublimation image depending on the project you want to make, but I have some fun and free options for you to try. To find them, go to jennifermaker.com 490 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 490 and when you find it, click it to download the zip file. If you're not sure how to do that, visit jennifermaker.com svgs. Inside the folder, there are five watercolor nature designs that we made with an AI art generator. There's a watercolor sunflower, another watercolor sunflower, a watercolor sunflower rectangle, a watercolor pond, and a moon window. You can mix and match the designs with the blanks or use your own files and photos. Let's go over each project one at a time so you can decide. Project one, the nightlight. Before we begin, remember that sublimation has a learning curve, so your first few transfers might not be perfect, but it's okay. I do recommend keeping one of the blanks clear. Not all nightlight blanks are the same depth, which is fine until you set them in the base. If it's too thin, the blank won't stand up straight. It'll sort of lean and the light won't shine on it as well. So set one of your blanks aside in case you need it to take up the extra space later on. Step one, prepare and print your sublimation design. The design should completely cover the acrylic, so measure your blanks, including the tab at the bottom. Both of my blank shapes are 5.1 inches wide, but the tab adds 0.8 inches to the height. I'm going to use Google Docs to print my moon design to fit on both shapes. 
You can find the detailed steps on how to do this at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation t-shirt. Make the designs a quarter inch larger than the blank's main shape. A bit of the tab will show above the base, but it will be covered enough by the extra design area. And you don't need to mirror them since we're using clear acrylic. Once the images are printed, let them dry to avoid smudges. You don't have to trim the excess paper since the designs will go off the blank's edges. Step 2. Sublimate your square nightlight blank. Just like any sublimation project, you'll want to open a window and or turn on a fan to help dissipate the ink fumes. Also, we're going to heat up the acrylic a lot and it will be hot. So you want heat resistant gloves to help you stay safe. In fact, the acrylic is going to get so hot that it will become malleable and it might curl while it cools. If the blanks curve a lot, they won't fit in the base. I found that out in testing. I'll show you how to keep them flat using a stack of books and a wooden cutting board, so have those ready. I'll use my Cricut Easy Press, but you can also use an auto press or traditional heat press too. Just make sure it will completely cover your blank. Checking my sublimation cookbook, I see that the recommended time and temperature is 360 degrees Fahrenheit or 182 degrees Celsius for 60 seconds. So I'll set it to preheat. Peel the protective paper off one side of the blank. If some of the paper sticks, use a lint-free cloth with rubbing alcohol to carefully scrub it off. Make sure you get all the residue because it will interfere with the transfer. Once the surface is dry, use a fresh lint-free cloth to remove any dust. Don't use a lint roller, it will just put sticky residue back on the acrylic. Place your sublimation print face up on your work surface with the design facing the correct way. Now put the unprotected side of the blank face down on the design so the area that you want to transfer is under the acrylic. Use heat resistant tape to secure the blank right to the sublimation paper. Place a clean sheet of white cardstock on your heat mat. Carefully flip the project over so the print is on top and place the items on the cardstock. Make sure all of the design is above the cardstock so the ink won't dye your pressing mat. Place a clean sheet of white uncoated butcher paper on top to totally cover the project. Lower your heat press straight down on top of your design. Keep the press in place to heat the project for 60 seconds. When the time is up, lift the press straight up and return it to its stand. Now right away, put on the heat resistant gloves and use the cardstock as a platform to move the project to the flat surface you prepared, like a cutting board. Keep the butcher paper in place and gently place your book on top of the blank. Don't jostle anything or the design might smudge since the ink is still settling down, right? It's still cooling down. Let it sit for a couple of minutes so the acrylic cools flat. After it's cooled, remove the book and the butcher paper. In fabric sublimation projects, we would simply lift the design, but it often sticks to acrylic. Don't worry, it's totally normal. Remove what you can of the paper by peeling it from the sides. Then place the blank in a shallow pan of water for a few minutes. Once the paper is saturated, use a soft sponge to remove the rest on both sides of the blank. The transfer paper might leave a white residue. That's okay, I promise. Let the project dry and it's ready. Put your batteries in the base, then slide the decorated blank in the slot with the shiny side facing out. Any white residue from the paper disappears when you turn on the light. Tips for working with a round blank. Decorating the round blank is pretty much the same, but it can be tricky to line up the design center. Holding the design and blank up to a light can really help. Also, be extra careful to protect your supplies from the excess ink if you're using a square design, since more of it will bleed over the edges. As long as the cardstock is in place, everything will be fine. Project number two, keychains. 
Sublimation keychains are a perfect way to keep your favorite images nearby or even a favorite song. If you want to learn how to create this fun and functional Spotify song code design, check out my Make It Sing workshop at makeracademy.com slash make it sing. Today, I'm going to use my first watercolor sunflower design for a keychain. Remember to measure your blank just in case the packaging was wrong. If you want to have the design bleed over the edges like I do, prepare and print a quarter of an inch larger in both dimensions. Just follow the steps at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation t-shirt to print from Google Docs. Now, since these blanks are small, you can fit several on one sheet. Just leave an inch or so between them so they're easy to cut apart. Remember, you don't have to mirror them since acrylic is clear. When your design is ready, preheat your heat press to 370 degrees Fahrenheit or 188 degrees Celsius. Check out my sublimation cookbook at sublimationcookbook.com if you're using a different heat press. Since the keychains can curl during cooling, have your heat proof surface, books, and heat resistant gloves ready along with your fan for ventilation. Peel off the protective plastic sheets on both sides of the keychain. Unlike the paper on the night lights, this stuff could melt. Gently wipe away any dust or debris with a lint free cloth. Remember, don't use a lint roller so you don't add any sticky residue. Now cut apart the designs. With the sublimation print face up on the table, secure the blank right to the paper with heat resistant tape. Place a clean sheet of white cardstock on your pressing mat. Put your blank on the cardstock with a print on top. Make sure any ink is above an area with cardstock. Place a clean sheet of butcher paper on top to totally cover the project and protect your heat press. Now lower your heat press straight down on top of the design. Use both hands with light to medium pressure to keep the project still and heat it for 60 seconds. When the time is up, lift the heat press straight up and return it to its stand. Put on your gloves and use the cardstock to move the project to your heat safe surface. Keep the butcher paper in place and gently put a book on top of the keychain to help it cool flat. Let it sit for a couple of minutes. After it's cooled, remove the book and the butcher paper. Peel off the design and soak the blank in water for a few minutes if anything is stuck on there. And then use a gentle sponge to remove the remaining paper. To attach the key ring to a key chain, use flat nose pliers to open the ring at the end of the chain. Put the key chain on the ring and close it with the pliers. And there you go, a beautiful key chain. Project number three, a curved photo panel. These thick acrylic panels have a special sublimation coating on them and are a great way to show off special photographs or artwork. Wash your hands before touching the coating which is the dull frosted side. I tried a few brands and I absolutely prefer the color light photo panels. The other brands I tried were much less consistent. And just like the other projects, measure your blank and print a design a quarter inch larger using Google Docs and then be sure to let it dry too. I also tested different heat presses on the panels and I prefer the auto press. It seems to distribute the heat better than an easy press, which is really important for getting a perfect transfer and a curved shape later. So preheat your auto press to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius and set the time to 230 seconds. Check out my sublimation cookbook at sublimationcookbook.com if you're using a different heat press. Peel the blue film off the panel's other side and set it on a clean surface with that side down. Now cut a piece of butcher paper large enough to fold in half and cover the entire photo panel with some space to spare. Fold and crease the butcher paper in the middle. Open the butcher paper and place the sublimation print face up in the middle of one side. Take the photo panel and place it dull side down onto the sublimation print. Make sure that the print goes over all edges. Holding the pieces in place, carefully flip the print and panel over so the acrylic is on the butcher paper. 
Keep the design still and use heat resistant tape to secure the print's edges to the butcher paper. Don't put the tape above the acrylic because it can leave an imprint during heating. Fold the other half of the butcher paper over the print and panel. Put a clean sheet of white cardstock on the pressing mat. Then carefully put the project on top. Now remember we're going to curve the panel. I found this heat safe ceramic canister that is the perfect size and curve for the panel I'm using. Lay the canister on its side on a safe surface. Stick a lint roller to its side and the work surface to keep it in place. And have your heat resistant gloves ready too. If you can't find a ceramic canister or another heat resistant item to use to curve your photo panel, Condé does sell a special jig for curving your panels. I'll put the link to this jig below the video as well as in my blog post at jennifermaker.com slash 490. All right, and now just press the panel for 230 seconds at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Once the press is complete, put on your heat resistant gloves. Now carefully grasp the butcher paper booklet by the sides and gently lower it on the canister so the design's bottom is parallel with the mold's base. Very gently start to pull the butcher paper sides downward to the canister, curving the panel inside. You need to be super careful with this. If you pull too hard or too fast, the sublimation coating can crack and the acrylic will stay malleable for at least a minute, sometimes up to two minutes, so just take your time. The panel doesn't need to wrap completely around the canister. You just want enough of a curve so that the acrylic can stand on its own. Once it's in place, don't let anything move until it's all cooled. When the panel starts to stiffen, the cooling process goes fast, so be careful not to shift it. When it's all cooled, lift off the project using the butcher paper, and then remove the tape and the papers. These panel blanks are so nice to work with, and the sublimation paper should come right off. And that's how you can sublimate beautiful designs onto acrylic surfaces. I really love how these projects turned out. The colors are so vibrant, don't you think? And there are so many different ways to display your results. Now we have noticed different results depending on the blank and the brand when testing acrylic sublimation projects, much more than a lot of other materials like fabric. I'm not sure of the reason, I'd love to figure it out, but these are definitely projects that might not be perfect on your first try. You might need to do some testing to find the best settings for your tools and blanks. Always check the packaging to see if they have recommendations because those are the best place to start. My sublimation cookbook has temperatures and times that have worked for me, but remember that there are a lot of factors in sublimation, material composition, temperature, pressure, time, and a whole lot more. So take your time. And no matter what, here are my top three tips for sublimating on acrylic. First, do your best to keep the heat and pressure even along and across the surface. Uh, second, if you want a flat result, like we did with the night lights, <laughs> let the project finish sublimating on a flat surface under a few books. Don't let it curl. Third, wear your heat safe resistant gloves when you move the hot projects and definitely keep your window open and your fan going for your safety. Remember you're heating both sublimation ink and acrylic this time, safety first. I do hope you'll try these projects and apply the techniques to others. Acrylic comes in so many different shapes and forms, just make sure the item says it will work with sublimation and then get creative. And if you wanna learn more about sublimation, check out the Sublimation Cookbook over at sublimationcookbook.com. Not only are the sublimation directions for lots of different acrylic projects in there, but so are over 150 other sublimation projects, all with the pressing times, temperatures, and pressures, among many other things. It is a super helpful guide that I use all the time myself because it's hard to remember all the numbers. You can pick up your copy at sublimationcookbook.com.
And I also have a Facebook group just for sublimation crafting, which is a great way to see all of the fun that you can have with it. Whether you're new to sublimation or not, come join us at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. We'd love to have you. Come ask us questions, share ideas, and get inspired. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love. Mm -hmm.